can I run a motor with the motor? So what I have is an eight tooth gear running into a 24 tooth gear. That gives me a, a three to one ratio. Yep, three turns of this, one turn of this, and that'll give me more torque to turn the motor itself. So I have that there. I have this little connection piece. That's the pin to line it up. There we go. That's on. A piece right here, just far enough away from the gear so it doesn't connect with it, but close enough that we're still getting those nice good tolerances. I'm gonna take, these are some Power Functions lights, just put into a, a beam, and I have those up here. And then I have the cores, I'm gonna do some cable management. Just far enough away, so it all kind of fits. So this wheel is gonna spin, and it's gonna spin, so this is gonna spin slower, about three times slower than the main flywheel, but it's gonna have more torque so the engine can run better. And so this power function motor will take its power, send it through the line to here, and then up to the lights, and you should see some lights. So you, so that's it running. These lights are flashing because like the engine, it's going at such a slow rate that this gets, it gets, I can actually spin it right here. You can see it, like it has to hit a certain speed. And so if it, it when it's idling, it can't, it, I've gotten it to idle and it idles just fine. And then it runs the motor. I think it's just the way it's configured. It's kind of drooping. And so there's a bit more friction on the axle. And I also had a heavier tire. So that meant the inertia of the tire kept it going. So yeah, trade-offs there. But it was running, it ran like full throttle and it was powering these lights and it was doing a really good job. I've personally never tried myself to get it to work because like every motor I've tried on, uh, it doesn't work as well because it doesn't have enough power or enough torque. That's, well, this one doesn't have enough torque, but it makes up for it in speed. So I can just convert it down and it's still fast enough to power these because these aren't ideal for generating electricity, but they work. This is basically all the same as last one, as the last one I made, and it's but it's a new and improved version. Everyone does those. And the only things that are the same, file is the same, but I've, I've changed it. I've removed the rubber because I can get better acceleration and I don't have to worry about at the speed it goes, the the actual rubber wheel starts to expand like if this is how big it was when it starts to go it gets just a little bit bigger and down in there when the tire's on that gap it gets really close and then it starts to lose performance uh the other things that are the same gate valve but in there if you can see the one by ones with holes in them i put those in because I actually broke one of these just clean in half because it had hit. So if I turn the fly a little bit, so down in there, underneath that gray piece is, that's where that those one by ones with holes in them, one right there and one right there. But sometimes this yellow edge piece, the valve to let the air back in, it would get caught underneath that and then it would hit this, the whole, valve here would get disfigured and stop working which was not good but it caused a lot of shear stress on the inside down in there which is how this ended up breaking this is not the one that broke obviously this is just another one I have but I had to end up replacing that but so I added I added one in there just because it's happened before it's actually happened twice and if I'm going to be running this reliably, I want to make sure that I'm not having to worry about it exploding on me. On we have the supports, these trusses right here. I have them down here to connect this bottom section up to the top. 
this one right here to connect this whole main middle section so that doesn't come flying off and then this right here to hold the entire main cylinder together there's nothing over here because there's no real actual use for it another improvement i made is i took that other blue transparent piece and i replaced it with this big transparent piece i did that so that it's actually one whole piece and so i don't have to worry about the pieces kind of bending in and affecting the piston and then i changed i just had a one by i just had a three long axle right there but i changed it to a three long axle with a stud and i did that because I kept changing it out because I had to make sure the orientation was correct to get the least amount of friction and I just wanted to be able to pull it out so I could switch out the pistons and whatnot. Now the thing you're looking at, you're like, okay, cool, that's all great, I see all these cool changes, but talk to me about the height, man. This looks like the Tower of Terror had a baby with an engine maker and it's super tall. And I'll tell you why it's really tall. It's because I learned that when you increase this rod, this rod's length, it decreases the amount of side friction on these two walls and can actually improve speed and performance. So you're thinking, oh, well, if it's longer, that's going to increase more weight and that's going to be less efficient. Why would I want to make it longer? Well, I'll explain that. So if we have our shaft, we have it right here, and we have our, we have our little circle right here that represents the uh, main counterweights and setup right here and then you have your piston. And so if we were to draw this as like a triangle because, hey, I'm gonna throw in math, it would look like this. So we got a right angle right there. That is, this is the angle we care about. And this is the length of your, this is the length of the arm. So in my case, this is a 15 long, I believe. Yep, 15. The last one I had was 10. And now we're at 15. Great. This I did this for exaggeration. Everyone, uh, I got pointed out to me that the one I made had a really a m longer than usual cam arm, and so that was not on purpose. I accidentally stumbled on what seems to be a really cool, simple fix if you want to make your engine go faster. And that was just because I used a universal joint and I needed it to be taller. So I just made it taller. And when it broke, because it broke in half, I had to switch it over to speed piston. And I just needed a 10 long axle. So I took an 11, made it one shorter. And then it, it ran smoother than any engine I'd run before. And I was just like, okay, cool. But it turns out it's, it's for these reasons I'm going to prove here. If you have a longer little shaft. So if this is, like, let's say this is two. And this is the same as two because nothing's changed there. If this is two, but this angle is re is really long, it's gonna have to be. So it's it's turning just slightly, just because we have to keep that length the same. We have to keep that there. This value up here is going to be smaller. I'm gonna just describe this. We're gonna call this value a. This is gonna be smaller than the value of x. And that's because it, it just because the length is longer, this angle right here has to compensate for the extra length. And so the amount of force pushing, so take your hand, take your hand and then take and push on it, like push on it sideways, push at it like a 45 degree angle, then push at it like 15. And you'll, and you'll realize it's a lot less pushing force when you're pushing at it like a 15 versus a 45 because the horizontal force is a lot greater here than it is here. And so that's the concept with making your cam arm longer. And so what I did is I took this to the extremes and made this 15. I could have dropped it down to five to show you guys how not good that is, but you've all seen it where it like rubs on the sides and you're like, why is that, why is that happening? And you have to compensate for it with like good, uh, good lubrication or stronger sidewalls to stop that from happening. But you, what you can do, and you don't have to make it 15, but you can increase it to like 10 or if you were using a 7, maybe go to a 9. If you were using a 9 and you still didn't like it, try, tr try that 10. And in my case, 15 is the longest I have, so I just went straight for 15. And as you saw, it was running pretty well. And 
Obviously there's a motor connected to this, so there's a bit more friction, but it runs rather smoothly. 